Hi everyone, Jonathan again. Hi, I've been promising this video for quite a while, so it's uh, uh, now let's do it. If you haven't watched the first one on how to mix the uh, colored sands, I advise you go and watch that first before you look at this. I'm going to try to show you how I get colors like this in one of my pine shells. Okay, the pine shells is a Steve Garrison technique. And but it's I use pine. I find the pine color can be okay, but I like to spice it up a little bit. So this is a much smaller one. Again, this is pine, so you can see that's kind of how they look. But I really want to give it a bit more color and have the color pop like this. So to do this, I'm going to be using colored spirit stains. I'm going to be using a mixture of stains. Some of these are from Crimson Guitar, uh, which is a UK-based company. Um, I'll also be using a product called Chestnut Wood Stain. And those ones actually are available internationally, while Crimson, I think, are UK only for the moment. All right, so uh, all I've done with this so far, it's been sanded down to a uh, 320 finish. Um, I've bathed it with a uh, white spirit to get all the dust and residue off. And now we're going to go and uh, get started. Uh, first color I'm going to start with is going to be phthalo blue. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I'm going to start with the inside first. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some inside there. Because I want it to get it all the way up into the very peak. Which is a bit tricky with my fingers. If it's uh, if I can't reach somewhere a lot of time, I will use perhaps a, a syringe or Q-tip. Right, so that's the inside done. And I'm going to do a coat on the outside. All right, so there's step one. All right, so what you're seeing is that little shimmer along the side, which is similar to that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch that bit up with a little bit of a, a 400 grit sandpaper. Now, I made a video before on these um, sandy hands, which is a glove with uh, Velcro attached to it. And then you can use different hook and loop bits of sandpaper to attach, which I think is really handy, especially for getting in the tight spots. So now it's just stuck in my fingers, and I can just go and touch up the little areas that I want, which are going to lighten it. and allow uh, different color blends to add into it. All right, so that's just our first coat. All right, so we've had a chance to dry, mostly dry. Uh, it's had a light sand, so now I want to, I'm gonna try to do something different. I'm gonna do a bit of a pattern in the back, and for that, I'm going to use the uh, red, and this is the cherry red. Now the cherry red, when it hits the blue, is going to look a little bit unusual. But a lot of them you can't really tell how it's going to look until you're done and you've actually applied the, uh, the lacquer coat on the top. But that kind of makes it a bit fun as well. So what I want to do is I'm going to start from the tail, and this is where you kind of need to watch the video first because I'm going to start with the blending. So I'm literally going to draw a line across the tail. up to the main part of the shell and then I'm going to start to spread out in my head it's kind of like a uh, like a crashing wave pattern almost not sure if it'll work but it's a nice thing about using the stain is if you don't like it just sand it get rid of the majority of it and the base coat will just add more to your overall design. Okay, so now I'm going back to my main line. I'm just kind of feathering it out across the side. 
So there we have our pattern. Comes all the way around. And we're just going to slowly push out into the blue. A little cup of water. Start rubbing on the edges, which will start to mingle the blue and the red. Okay, once that's on, it's had a few minutes to, to and again I'm going to take the 320 sand grit paper and I'm just wiping over it. Again, this is just helping it blend in. Okay, we're getting a nice different kind of color pattern now on the exterior. It's like a mottled, bruisey color. So, next color I'm going to add will be purple. And I'm just going to grab a Q-tip. Pour a little bit of the color into the cap. And I'm going to outline that blue circle. And I want this to be on quite thick. Right, if I get wet this wet and just give it a wipe over, you're going to start to see what the overall effect is going to be. Yeah, so we're getting that nice colored pattern there we have here. And those light colors there, once you put the lacquer on, it's really going to make it look quite uh, iridescent. All right, some more interior color. I want to add a little bit more purple on the inside. So we have a green shape, we have a red shape around that. I'm going to do a light purple shape around that one as well. Spreading that out. And then, like always, get the cloth and give it a wipe. I'm going to take some blue and follow that purple line. I'm just going to touch up the beak of this. And then just the odd dab here and there. Okay, final step. So you can see where I've added those splashes of blue. I've given another one over really lightly with the 400. Now I'm going to go over the whole thing again with another bit of blue, but this time I've really diluted maybe 20 drops of water to one drop of stain. And again, it's an experiment. I don't know how it's going to come out. It might be terrible, it might destroy everything. Or it might come out good. We'll see. Okay. I'm hoping this last bit of blue, it's going to accentuate the different reds and purples. That's the plan. Remember, the lacquer finisher usually takes five plus coats to get a really good shine on it. And when you use a lacquer, it's you're not doing it's not actually five coats, you're doing it five times. Each coat then kind of melts the bottom one and it blends in to the top. Alright, final step. Chestnut products. This is the yellow spirit. And I'm going to touch that up. 
and it's going to really bring out the greens, the blues. All those other colors we've mixed and blended in there. All done. Okay, final step. Uh, clear high gloss lacquer spray. And just a few light coats. And you can kind of see, I hope. The color differentiation in that might come up a little bit more on the side. All right, you can see in there it's following the grain pattern, looking really good. So this is going to take uh, four or five coats inside and outside, and in between each coat, each one gets sanded with an 800 grit. Uh, sounds like a lot, but it doesn't take very long, and the results you get are very good. There we go, final result. See the blues and the greens have blended in quite well. Right on the top's a bit dark, but that's okay. It looks better in the natural light, but that uh, abalone effect has come out nicely. And there's the interior. Alright, I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys uh, were able to get something out of it. If you have any questions at all, just uh, send me a message. Um, but most of it is just a try, experiment, see how it works. And if worse comes to worse, send it back, try again. Okay, thank you for watching. That was how to color a wooden shell with a uh, uh, colored wood sink. Hope you guys liked it, learned something from it. Uh, next couple of videos I'll show you how I do some different kind of colors. This one is not quite finished yet. I'm not happy with how we've blended here, so I'm going to sand that back a little bit. Add a few more colors. Be sure to subscribe. Next video I do will be how to carve something like this. An ammonite out of a solid chunk of pine. Here's the one I'm currently doing. Always lots of fun stuff to do. So thanks for watching this, we made it to the end, and I'll see you next time.